Hi, welcome back to BarissaBrothers.com. My name is David. And my name's Matt. Today we want to talk about the chemistry of milk. In so many of our classes we have people that come in and they say, how do I choose the milk and what's the best milk? And there's a few things as a barista, whether it be a commercial barista or a home barista, that you should be looking at. And that's what we want to discuss with you today. Three main things to look at when discussing milk from a barista's perspective. Uh, these are not things you want to bring out at a dinner party, but they are very important in a technical sense to look at when discussing milk. The first is lactose content in milk, the second is the fat content in milk, and the third thing to look at is the protein content in milk, and they will all have implications for the way the milk performs as you texture it on an espresso machine. Absolutely. It's interesting to note with milk that as we heat the milk up, the milk actually become sweeter. And I guess the reason is because the, the lactose, which can be broken down further into two uh, subgroups of sugars, are more soluble as you heat the milk up. So hot milk versus cold milk, hot milk is always going to be sweeter than cold milk. So the second thing you look at is the fat content in milk. And I guess the more full cream, full cream milks usually have about 4% fat, skim milks can have zero fat, and low-fat milks usually have about 2% fat in them. Basically, using full cream milk will give you a more full-bodied coffee and it will taste uh, more creamier, I suppose, and potentially give you a better flavour. However, it's all up to personal preference, isn't it? And, and quite frankly, skim milks can uh, create great coffees and, and indeed the espresso may well punch through skim milk a little more easily than full cream milk. I think that's right. I think it just what you like is what you'll get used to, basically. And there really is no right or wrong. A friend of mine recently was ordering a large uh, cup of uh, coffee, one of those big takeaway um, cups, and they were kind of lamenting the fact that they would rather have the full cream milk, um, but they were stuck with having skin because they thought they were going to put on weight or, or whatever. And I said to them, why don't you just order a small cup of coffee and have the full cream milk? You don't need the large cup of milk. And it hadn't dawned on them to do that before, and from then on I uh, kind of thought, well, great, I'll do that from now on. The last thing to look at uh, from a technical point of view is protein. Hmm. Now, the um, proteins are what we'll stretch or aerate as we heat up and put froth or put air into the milk, and it's the proteins that will protect or create a protective coating around the froth or the bubbles and then help it all rise up and stay intact as it goes up. So the protein, I guess, helps uh, the suspension of the, the air in the milk and that's the reason that it all drifts up to the top and, and if done properly the, the, bio, the bubbles are very very small um, and the protein coats all of those very very microscopic bubbles to perform uh, or produce rather a beautiful creamy layer on top of that cafe latte or cappuccino or whatever the milk based coffee is. Mm. And sometimes with um, skim milks, because they have more proteins in, it's easier to create, create that nice, denser froth. But also, this is where the fats now start to come into play, because the fats will affect the stability of that froth. So sometimes as the fat content increases, the stability of that froth to stay suspended and to stay there actually decreases. And that's another reason why sometimes the stability of the froth is more in skim milk than it is in full cream milk. That's right, and not all brands perform the same, do they? No, they don't. Uh, when we were uh, setting up our barista schools, what we were looking for was a milk that would perform at a very high standard and also throughout the year. The milk, as we know, comes from a cow, and the cow will eat different things throughout the year. And in some areas, the food is not even available on the ground because there might be snow there or something else. So what we're looking for is a milk that will perform at a high standard throughout the year and that really is up to the milk company to create that high standard of milk. And there are milk companies where the milk will come in from the farmer and they'll say, no, that's not good enough to go into that vat of milk that we're sending out to our customers. Now as a commercial barista, this is critical. We need a high standard because we want to have a consistently high standard product that goes out to our customers. So in Sydney, for example, we tested all the milk and we ended up working with a company called Riverina 
and we've done work with that same company now in Melbourne and Brisbane at our um, Brister uh, schools as well to make sure we have a super high standard of milk. And I think as a home barista, you'd have to do the same, wouldn't you? You'd go to the supermarket and try different milks from the supermarket to see whether it be skim or full cream to see what suits you the best. So it may mean buying the eight different brands that are on offer and just scientifically testing them one day because once you hit on the right uh, brand of milk, uh, and especially so with soy as well, I've found, you can get exceptional soys that create that really creamy, smooth texture on the top of, of the milk after you've frothed it or textured it, and some just produce massive big bubbles. So um, I guess at, at this point, it might be worthwhile dispelling a couple of myths that people have with, with milk. I mean, in our barista classes, a common question is, what is better, full cream or skim? Well, there's no right answer. As we said before, very subjective. Um, skim milk can produce more froth. As a barista, you'll also notice, though, that it separates very quickly. Froth to the top of the jug, hot milk to the bottom very quickly. So you must be swirling that milk well before you pour it and using it very quickly after you froth it, and you should anyway. Another um, common question is cold milk versus uh, warm milk, which, which is better in the creation of, of creamy textured froth. The colder the milk, the better. Clearly, you have longer uh, spin and texture of the milk prior to it becoming 60, 65 degrees Celsius, which is an ideal temperature for milk. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about that in, a, uh, in another segment. So that's kind of the story of milk. What do we look for? What's the chemistry of milk? And what should you look for, either as you, a home barista or as a commercial barista? So thank you very much for joining us today. We look forward to, to seeing you again soon. Thank you.